Hey everyone, welcome to yet another entry into the Who Is series, where I go in-depth in explaining the backstory and lore of fighting game characters. Before we get into this episode, if you could drop a like, subscribe, and comment down below any questions or videos you'd like to see next. Anyways, today's topic is the misguided, redemption-seeking demon, Ashra. Let's begin just before Ashra's debut game, Mortal Kombat 4. Ashra is a Netherrealm demon, and at the time, part of the Brotherhood of Shadow, who during MK4 were launching a surprise attack on the realms, led by Shinnok, the fallen elder god. This was halted though, when Shinnok was defeated. This caused the Brotherhood of Shadow to essentially be broken. Ashra did remain loyal to the Brotherhood after all this, but was getting more and more angry at Quan Chi as he gives her orders. Quan Chi, seeing this, sent fellow demons to kill her, because if there's one thing Quan Chi despises, it's free will. But Ashra found the Holy Chris Blade, which called to her, giving her the idea that with this blade, she can kill demons and those filled with evil, cleansing her of her evil, thus allowing her to be free from the Nether Realm. She used this to vanquish her fellow demons, including Quan Chi's soldiers sent to kill her. You see, this blade made the wielder believe their killing for the greater good, but as many probably expected, that was a lie. The blade's real title was a creation known by the vampire race as the Datusha. It is said that this sword was made for creating a genocide for demons and vampires. During her conquest, she eventually finds Shujinko in Mortal Kombat Deception's conquest mode, and offers to give him training. She also has Sujinko find the Chris for her, as at this time, she's lost it and needs to get it back. Through her conquest, she finds Ermac, and believing he's evil, and that killing him would help her achieve her goal, she fights Ermac, and is defeated, but lives. After this though, she finds Bihan, known as Noob Saibot, and in her MK Deception ending, she believes killing him would grant her access out of the Nether Realm because of the great evil being sensed in Noob. She also notices Cyber Smoke, but sees that he is not as, let's say, evil inclined as Noob. She does defeat him, and to her delight, is cast out of the Nether Realm. When this happened, she woke up in a daze which, with the influence of the Blade, caused her to hallucinate higher beings. They called her the true wielder of the Blade. As you can see, the Blade seems to influence the user in such a degree that the thoughts put into the user's mind makes them believe it was their own. With this large influence, she started to head out and purge all evil she could find. And the first stop? Viternus, the Vampire Realm. She would then commit genocide on their race, who because of their traits and feeding off of others, they were viewed as inherently evil to the Blade and her. But this was luckily stopped by the Vampire Natara. But before Natara could kill Ashra, she was transported to Adenia. Having survived and definitely not discouraged, she planned to hunt down Natara and stop at nothing to kill her. The next time we see her is the Battle of Armageddon, in which as most know, where her and most everyone perish. It is interesting to mention that in her Armageddon Tower ending, the power of Blaze turned Ashra into a being of divine light and was able to pacify the wicked, most notably purifying Quan Chi. It is important to note tower endings are almost never canon, and this is no exception. This is the last we see of Ashra directly until MK11, where we get mentions of her iconic hat as seen as a crypt item for the collector trade. We do know her bio for MK1, and it reads as follows. As a demon, all Ashra knew was pain and violence. She assumed all beings in all realms lived as she did. But once she journeyed outside of the Nether Realm, she realized her error. Other realms were places of beauty and peace. She could not aid in their defilement. Ashra fled from her sister demons. Along the way, she found an enchanted Chris. It was a demon slayer, which she used to finish her pursuers. She was stunned to discover that using the Chris to destroy evil was purifying her soul, and that if she continued to do so, she could free herself from the Nether Realm. Ashra senses that her final absolution is near. Once achieved, she will finally enter the light. 
This is the last of Ashra, as she has been for the longest time on the sidelines. But with the full release of MK1 coming up, she will definitely have more to be talked about, so I will most likely update this video when that time comes. With that being said, I do hope you all enjoyed, and I think this is a really interesting look, quick look, but interesting look at a character that is not touched on a lot and has a very different redemption story, which is not a thing commonly used in Mortal Kombat. Either way, hope you all enjoyed. Please, if you could, drop a like and subscribe. It really does mean a lot. And I know this was short, but I'll see you guys in the next one really soon, and be good people. Bye.